request, have anyone seen so-and-so, last seen on you know, two years ago in some, you know, some, some you know, provincial place, Christian missionaries were going missing quite a dozen every day. Anyone who was white was in danger, especially. So I thought, anyway, this is it, we're finished. And I didn't feel too bad about that. You know, you don't have to speculate or, you know. That's it, you know, it's all over. Well, you get worried about it. We're just chanting Hare Krishna, Namaste, Narashinga. What else are you going to do in a situation like that? I haven't got anything else. Nobody knows you're there. Nobody knew where I was. So it was just like, that was it, you know. Good. It's all over, no more worries. So we're going down the track, and then, um, all of a sudden, there's a narrow track, and all of a sudden, the truck stops, and you can see there's lights, something's coming the other way, they couldn't get past it. And some of the stuff, and they both vehicles stop, and all of a sudden, the guy comes to the back, and they, they open up the kind of the, the back of the cattle truck, they didn't open it before, they opened it up, and there was a guy there, another big African guy, shining a torch in my face, and then he's talking to these guys. The next minute, I, we know, is that the truck's moving, they're both moving backwards, one's going this way, one's going up, backwards. And they're both, and then, well, the, the one car will stay there, it was actually, the air truck moved backwards, and it's all of a sudden, group, we're, we're, we're reversing, and he's driving the other way, the same way as the car. And we're driving back where we came from, the next thing we were back in the town, and then we're, let's say, escorted into the police, into the prison, and put in the prison. I don't know what the heck was going on. It so happened that the guy who was coming the other way was the, um, the, um, the assistant commissioner of the district. And officially speaking, the army was supposed to act in, under his direction, but they weren't, they were independent. In this case, because he happened to be there, they, were, they had to do what, they were, what he told them to do. He wanted to make an investigation on it. So we went back and were in the prison. And so he said, wait, you have to wait. The, kid, the chief commissioner is coming back in four days from, from uh, his hunting expedition, the mountains. So then, uh, and then we'll decide. So I had to wait there for four days, and I wonder what was going on. And my fever went away, it was incredible. That experience is, it's just ironic, it was almost like something which had to happen. Um, and then anyway, after four days, they released, released, they released my friend, the local guy. They kept me there. Nothing to eat. And the inner, inner cell, there were two cells, every cell which was like, well, you know, what can you say? It's, uh, how much experience of hell we've had, but it was pretty hellish. And uh, the inner cell, however, was really hell. I did see Yamaraj in there, but he probably was in there. It was so hellish. I can't believe it. That was, I said, I said I have to go to the toilet. So they said, you know, the, the, the toilet was the inner cell where the other prisoners were. They passed stool on the floor. There was no windows, there's a hole in the roof. A little tiny hole for that old area. No lights. All you could see was like little white flashing eyes and groaning. And that was the toilet. And those guys are staying there. You know. God knows how until they die. You know, it's just hellish, complete hell. And I just couldn't eat or drink or anything practically. I just couldn't bear the idea of going back in there. It was terrible. And then they, at least they kept me in the outer cell which had windows and was tolerable. So um, then after four days the commissioner came back and he said, uh, because he made an investigation and that before he came to see me and the other guys had talked to him. He said, Hey, say, old boy! He spoke with an Oxford accent. He, he studied in Oxford University, an African guy, you know, like a colonialist. What are you doing here, you blithering idiot? <laughs> he was speaking to him like this. You're not an Arab spy, are you? Because they thought, they, they were saying I was an Arab spy. You know, dressed like this, you know, it's a lot, you know. So, Get out of here right away. Don't come back. And he put me in his jeep so he'd drive over the desert in the jeep. And I just took the next train back to my, my porting place in back to Kenya. So that's how he got arrested. Doesn't sound. And I say I felt a lot better when I was about to go, I thought we were going to get shot. And I was for four days in that prison, knowing not going to hell what was going to happen. It was, uh, you know, knowledge. Knowledge is better than ignorance. <laughs> so the same thing when you have ignorance. Ignorance is the real cause of distress. The cause of distress. So let's see if we can distribute this knowledge in mass.
and this will relieve people of their distress. And if we take this knowledge and apply it in life, we'll also become free of distress, even faced with such dangers as death and what other dangers we all have to face in our lives. Don't worry about, you know, how people think of you if you're not on top of the mountain. Just sincerely try your very best to please go over them. Try to be an instrument in the fight against ignorance. We're not fighting against people. We're not fighting against religions. We're not fighting, even with our mind in one sense, we're fighting against ignorance, darkness, forgetfulness of Krishna. All right. Well, we better finish that because the marathon has to go on. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Jai.